So, so that happened during the period of the lockdown, right? Yes. So at which, uh, how long did it take? How long did this kind of flare-ups start to manifest since the day I, one of lockdown? I guess about two weeks after it. So the mm-hmm. first first week, we was trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. The second week, we was like, hold on. I'm getting yeah. annoyed. You're getting annoyed. The yeah. kids getting annoyed. Yeah. So something somebody's gonna get it. <laughs> Did you try to resolve and talk through it? Was it a time whereby at the later stage you resolved these uh, emotional and mental stresses within yourself and between yourselves? Well, I received help. I was using um, a therapist over the internet, a oh, virtual okay. therapy. So I think that applies a lot too. So you guys yeah. can utilize that. Virtual therapy is not, a, it yeah. shouldn't be afraid to ask for help yeah. because it's very needed at this time and, you know, it's very needed. Yeah. So once I started gaining tools from the therapy, I started to, you know, open up and be able to talk about my feelings and how I felt. And we started to use it with our marriage after that. Okay. So, so. He also started using the virtual um, therapist with, with a real person behind it, of course. Yes. Okay. So how long did that, that journey take for you all to recognize that, hey, we need to resolve this? How long did it take? How I'll many? give it about a good month, a month and a half. We started using the two, utilizing the tools that we was taught. Mm. And, and, how, and who was the decision that, hey, let's reach out for help? You? It was me because I was reaching out for help for myself. And yeah. getting help for myself, I found out that there was a, a, a person that can do that as well, virtual. So yeah. by me getting help, yeah. that opened up the door for me to you know, speak freely about my situation and gain knowledge mm-hmm. and information from the therapist to get help for that as well. Wonderful. I think, I think this is a very important piece of information for the viewers and uh, the listeners out there. You know, a lot of us, I mean, I, I didn't know that was like virtual help. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know in this part of the world where I am, I don't know if there is. It, I mean, in the US, I'm glad that you're saying it. There is help um, somewhere. In the virtual world, you can, there's no concept of borders, right? You can, you can actually reach out to the person in another part of the world, like what we're doing now. Right. So, so I think it, it's, a, it's a good point that, that you have raised. So, so that was during the period of lockdown in March, April. So how, how are you all doing? How are you guys doing now as a couple? We are we really, I'm going to say it takes, it takes days. We have days that we're bad. Not yeah. bad, but, you know, we don't want to talk. Yeah. But then we have days that we're good. But the days that we're bad, we don't go to sleep on it. Yeah. We're going to talk about it at the end of the day. Oh, and that's okay. the two. That's a tool that we we utilize from the therapy. We don't go to sleep on it. So you've got tools given by the therapist to kind of deal with it at least right now. So when right. you've got the tools right now, I, I mean, does it does it clear up a lot of these unseen tension, uh, kind of like resolve differences already? Yes, it does. It does. So so yes. the kind of temperature does go down a little bit. I'm sorry, I can hear you. What did you say? I'm saying that the temperature goes down. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. So are you into the second lockdown now? Um, we're not in the second lockdown. We just have to be cautious. But okay. I'm still utilizing the lockdown. I'm still doing everything on my, my end. My kids yeah. are in virtual school. Yeah. Um, I'm utilizing it still. I'm not going to stop until I know what's going on, an official yeah. what's going on. Okay, and you say that you're actually in phase three, right? Whereby people yes. are really like trying to dispose of their masks, um, which is different from other parts of, of uh, America, whereby they're actually going already into lockdown, right? Different parts of America. So yes. you are now trying to open up economy. Um, do you think the community is prepared uh, 
realistically um, in this kind of scenario that you know you're looking at the numbers etc do you think that the community is being prepared i want to say no mm. but the governor feels that it is okay does it make your husband harder because you know he's not um uh he, he don't feel as useful as before because you know that 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 part of him uh, of the control is taken away from him, you know, all these months. Um, how, how is he dealing with that? Um, you know, going back to work or not going back to work, staying home, how is he dealing with, with that thing that, you know, um, a man goes through? Is he dealing with it better now? Yes, he's dealing with it better. And also he utilized, he, even though he's in one field, he researched and he found a way to make money by virtual. I see. That means he, he did lose his job, you're trying to say? Yes. Oh, okay. Now, now that is a big hit. Yeah, it was a big financial hit. Big, big, yeah. big. Yeah. But... Okay. Tell us. Yeah, but we were pressing forward and he found another of source of income that he's utilizing. And we're, we're not where we were, but we're coming back to where we were. But we're comfortable. So that's a blessing. And, and I want to ask you, um, it's a little bit of uh, sensitive. You know, when, when you, you, you are a person that get, got fearful from the news, right? Yes. Um, looking at the numbers and, and that was in March and there was a reluctance from your, your president um, to, to recognize um, the situation. Um, I, without me going through too much or making too much comments as an outsider, um, because I'm not in, in the situation, but tell us this thing that was playing in the US, describe to us, you staying there and we reading the news, and we, we, we don't know what we're reading right now. It's like, what is real and what's not real? Tell us. I'm going to say like you, it's like you say you don't, you don't know what's real and what's not real. I'm the same way. I don't know what's real and what's not real because everything, that guy has a cartoon character. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. So how did you feel when, um, does it make, does it give you any assurance? Like when the president says, hey, um, this is going to magically disappear. I don't want to say anything negative toward our president, but he made a bad, a bad call. Um, a lot of things that he says and have done previously, I just had to shake my head and like, okay, maybe he's feeling bad today. Mm. How do you but handle it? Say, how do you handle it as, as a mom? Like, you know, you're looking at things unfold. You know, throughout the months, this thing unfolds. Another month, this thing's, you know, it's like you're going through this. It's not getting any better. And it's prolonged, you know. I mean, back in April, we would think, okay, this thing is going to go away in one or two months' time, right? I think the world over was thinking, oh, this is going to go away, or this is going to be controlled in a couple of right. months. But we, we are now at like in November, and and no end, no end yet. So, so, so you as a mom. Uh, and you were telling me that you've got all these anxieties, etc. And, and and with that kind of um, of current social affairs, political situation that is going on, um, how how did you like still hold it together? <laughs> Amazing therapy, therapy for one. Yeah, my kids for two and God. Faith. Yeah, my faith, cause faith. that's the only three thing I can say because it's so much. But you know what? This is the new normal that we have to object. You know, just our mindset the to. Yeah, the new normal. The new and normal. until something changed, then we can refocus our mindset and do that. But at this time, I'm I'm just resetting my mind to be the new normal and to do what I have to do. Okay. It's not, there's no time to play. It's the new norm. Yeah. Did, did, um, you were in anxiety, you were in uh, depression. Um, 
Did you have anger? Yes. Tell us. I was extremely angry because I was like, how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> like, where did this come from? Why did it happen? And then our president go off and get off the deep end. I was like, you can't blame nobody. For, you know, you don't know what's going on. You making, I'm going to say he pulled a rabbit out of a hat type of conversations he was making. I was like, wow. Let's figure out what can we do to stop this as we can do vaccines. But you are focusing on blaming others. I'm like, let's figure out what's going on so we can all live and be safe. Yeah. How, how did you handle so it was how, how how was the anger? I mean I, I mean I was angry too. Um, you know, in a totally different situation, but I was angry like no, this is going on. Um, why is it not control? Um, how could this happen? You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of inner anger myself too. But for you, how, how much and how intense was your anger? I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna say this. It was extremely bad because I was feeling guilty for bringing kids into the world for this type oh. of stuff to happen. Oh, so I was wow. feeling angry at myself. I was like, what was I thinking? You know, yeah. even yeah. though we don't know that this was happening, but it made you have a really bad feeling like, okay, I brought kids in the world oh. to go through this. Yes. And they can potentially die at five years of age and so oh, forth. Okay. Yeah. So so that, that was so much anger, right? And and were you able to control it? I mean, it was it the therapy which helped you? Yes, it had to be the therapy, praying, praying fasting, fasting, and just having my family, just having yeah. the family around. My yeah, immediate I family, not yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and I just want you questions about the woman, the lady of the house. Okay. Um, and because you were like so much anxiety, as I and you were in this lockdown, um, how do you take care of the physical household? Did you like, um, I mean, I became like a compulsive cleaner. <laughs> um, you know, but, but the cleaning kind of like helped me to calm me down. Um, how, What's your experience like in being the lady of the house? You said you you hit the head and hammer and nail the nail on the head. Why just say that? But you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's one thing about me. I'm always saying four fish things, so you have to just ride the wave. <laughs> but the cleaning helped me out a lot. It gave me a sense of peace, control, and something that I can control. Yeah, yeah. and something that I can physically control. Yeah. I can control the way it looks. I can control what's going on. Yeah. I can control how much I can put in this and this time and this and that. And nobody yeah. can take that away. Yeah. Now, did you have like a procedure, a structure, like a cleaning structure, a cleaning procedure? Um, you know, especially when you're going out, you're coming in, you talked about, okay, I get fears when I go out to get my essentials and then I'm coming in, I'm not bringing anything back to the household. Did you have any of these? Um, procedures, cleaning, standard cleaning procedures that, that or hygiene procedures that you implement um, in yes. the house. Tell me, tell us. Okay. okay, like you said, when I go out, I don't, I have to disrobe before I get in, wash my hands in the, the bathroom, the uh, restroom that's closer to the door, wash my hands, sanitize, spray, take the clothes off, put it in a bag, ship it on through, you know, wash off. Don't let nobody use that restroom because the restroom is only for when you go in and out. Sorry, where that restroom the... is only it's close to the door. Oh, use the toilet that's closest to the main door and clean yourself before yes. you come into the house. Clean. Wonderful. Right. And, and um, that's what I implemented. <laughs> See, we think alike. <laughs> I mean, being the the lady of the house, right? You know, yeah. Like, like standard procedures to to keep your house safe to keep everyone safe i mean the woman gets into this protective protection mode like a protector right right, right. now tell me as the woman of the house how do you think uh, and i want to ask 
women, uh, you know, throughout my, my conversations with, with women, and, and you being the first woman, the first mother that, that I interview uh, for this, for this uh, session, is that um, the woman's role in the pandemic, the woman or the wife's role or the mother's role in the pandemic, how would you describe it? The role, we play everything. We have to play the mother, sometimes the father, the doctor, the, the nurse, the teacher, the, the wife, wiper, the scary man, the boogeyman. We have to play all roles in one. The boogeyman. <laughs> yes. I think you forgot the police woman too. Yes. That's what I call the boogeyman for the kids okay, when they would be back the in the car. The boogeyman, the woman. <laughs> Wonderful. And, and you're yes. right. I think women has got a huge role to play uh, when history looks back. Um, it, it has been shown that women leadership uh, takes charge of this situation better. Like right. in Germany, um, the, prime uh, the, the, the prime minister of Germany, Angela Merkel, right? She took charge. And then you've got New Zealand, she's a woman. And you've got some European uh, 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 head of the country, that the woman, and they're able to control and bring down uh, the numbers and to control the situation. And, and, and I think there, there were news reports or news studies that have shown that women took this seriously, right? And they're right. able to implement, uh, manage uh, the situation so much better with clarity, with procedures, that keeps it contained uh, and with success, you know, slow success um, and uh, with less fumbling from men's leadership. And, and, I, and right. I think this, I think history will really shows itself that, um, you know, the women of the house, takes, it, it's, it's, I think it's the, it, it will become the, 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 the pillar of the house that takes care of everyone. Right. And, um, families um, to be taken care of is number one because you don't want to have a cluster which could be dangerous, right? And, and the right. woman is the person that's managing this household, right? That's correct. Yeah. yeah, and that's why I'm really interested in, in what you do. Tell us what more do you tell your husband? Like, okay, this is what you have to do, point one, mm. point Point three. Tell me. Tell us. Okay. First thing he says that I go overboard. <laughs> He's like, "Wow, you just hold, take a breath, just give it a second. I go overboard because I'm like, you have to do this, you have to follow this order, you have to go do that, you have to do this, you have to follow A, get the B, C. He's like, hold on, take a breath, <laughs> you take a break. No, tell us what he said. Like you got to take. You got to do A, B, C, D. Now, to describe your A, B, C, D instructions to him. Okay, when you get up in the morning, you have to make sure that you have, utilize your time, take a second, take your medicine, take your vitamins. If you take the vitamins, then you have to go over to the gym. You have to go to the gym, work out for about 30 minutes. Then you can go do the trash. Then you do the trash. He's like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Let's take a break. Okay. But did, um, did, did you... Did you later simplify your procedures? And did he adapt to your standard? Um, I wouldn't say he adapt because he quit doing them. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to share with you a little bit because I'm enjoying my conversation with you. Um, yeah, my, my, my husband did say that, hey, um, am I being a little bit uh, OCD? No. Um, uh, obsessive, compulsive, um, over it, you know, um, and because I do have my procedures, but probably not as much as you do, but I feel that procedures <laughs> are important. Uh, right. The standards are important um, for many reasons, right? You are going through uh, a crisis. It's, a, it's about crisis management. And I keep saying that. We're trying to keep it in, under control. So you do everything to keep the fire and the control, right? You just kind of like, right. yeah, shoot the fire, you know, the hose or the water and all this. And, um, but, um, I, but I would say that um, uh, my husband complied uh, to 
Um, so I'm still keeping to my to my um, procedures, but my my principle uh, to him and to myself is: if it becomes a new normal in the household, you don't feel it's a procedure. You just feel it's like a habit, and you don't even think about that. And we have to come and arrive to this level of unconscious practice, such that this unconscious practice becomes part and parcel of our lives. It says, which is what the world is talking about, the new normal, when you're going out, get to wear a mask, go to social distance. Um, that's a new normal, right? What more if, right. you're, if you're within the household, you want to protect your kids, right? right. Um, and you've got, if you've got like elderly parents, you've got, you've got to protect them. So I don't think any procedure is an overboard. I mean, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, because we are in this protective mode as a woman. Um, right. to take care of other human beings, right? Um, so so you got to take care of them in a way that it is procedural to say, you, you're not a doctor. Um, like what you say, we can only be the policewoman at this time. <laughs> so my, right. to you and I totally um, encourage you and um, uh, I would like to just... Um, uh, uh, give you my applause. <laughs> no, I totally, I totally give you my applause from this part of the world. <laughs> no, it is needed. It is needed. It is needed. You know, um, until something hits, then you would say that, hey, why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do this? I will regret this. No, we we sh we should prevent as much as we can. Um, right. I mean, that, that's my principle. Uh, I mean, and also I was talking to um, a friend um, over a podcast is that now if, if this war is being fought in the hospitals and you've got the doctors and the nurses, they're all in the PPP, uh, PPE um, suits yes. and they're doing so much work. Now, whatever we are doing is nothing compared to them. Right. How could we just say that it's overboard? We're not overboard. I mean, I'm not overboard. Neither are you overboard. We are just being responsible so that we're not adding a burden to the outside world. We're not adding a burden to the hospitals, right? Um, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really think that whatever you're doing is, um, you know, salute. <laughs> right, right back to you. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I, I think women, um, a history will show that um, women did play a great part in this. I mean, a woman like you and a woman like me, I would say. Right. Um, because we have certain things, uh, the procedures, and if people are listening in, viewing it, um, I think some of these things should be shared. You know, and if people are thinking this is overboard, and I'm looking at how could it be overboard when 90% of the planes are shut down? The borders of the countries are, are shut down. People are not flying. Do you think it's overboard for the government? Nobody wanted this thing to happen. We are just doing what we can do within our control, within our whole right. small world of microcosm. So let no man say you're overboard. <laughs> you're doing it's good, lady. You. <laughs> you're to keep going. going. <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I think we're just doing our part. Um, compared to what's being done in outside, uh, we are, right. you are just being responsible and we're taking care of um, your family, children, siblings, um, elderly, parents, etc. Um, I've got a couple of questions and you know, I enjoy so much with you, um, Alicia, you know, because you're so real. Right. And sharing this are real things that we all are facing in our life, no matter what, where you are, you know, you are in America somewhere, in Louisiana, and I'm in Singapore. <laughs> and we're thinking the same way and doing the same things. <laughs> and being called hey. up. And being called up by our husband. <laughs> yeah. So listen, you guys. Listen, no matter where you are, women are still women. We all think alike. Yeah. No, we are protecting you, mind you. Right. You know, yeah. And, and um, now I, I would think that the role of women uh, will be studied on as much as uh, the role of uh, 
how or, or how community responded as a whole. I think that would be uh, cases whereby people were studied. Now there's an urgency in studying the vaccine, but I think historians and anthropologists would look back and they would say, hey, you know, this is how a country responded. This is how a, a particular tribe of people responded to a crisis. Right. And I think and I think it's never a, an overstatement to, to say that, no, um, uh, uh, these are real things. And, and we shouldn't be like afraid to talk about it or be ashamed of what we're doing. Um, or, or people are judging and say that, hey, you are uh, overboard or you're just paranoid. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I've got people who say, oh, this must be, par you must be paranoid. I mean, how could this be paranoid when 90% of the planes are, are, are shut down? People can't fly. It has never happened in history, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, Alicia, I, thank you so much. I enjoy so much with you. Um, now, I've got a couple of questions before we, um, we complete our conversation. It's already been an hour of such an enjoyable conversation chat with you um, <laughs> across the globe. Surprisingly, you know, we've got so much in common. <laughs> yes. Good job, lady. Okay. Um, I want to know two things. What will you see um, coming? Because you're going to be in a phase three. What do your judgment and your eyes tell you? What? How will you look into the future in this phase three? Right? What will happen? And tell me the um, economic situation, like um, business being um, hit companies, the businesses closing down, jobs being lost. Tell us the second part. Um, yeah, tell us these two things. Okay, so what I see being phase three, I think we're going to end up going back to phase two. That's my personal opinion. Um, because the reason I say that is because schools are going, the ones that are going back to school, they've been back to school for about two months, they are getting COVID cases being Already. picked up. Now. Already. Yeah. In elementary school. Yeah. So they're gonna go to they're gonna go back to phase two, I believe. That's my that's what I would want them to do. Yeah. But I I'm not the government official, so I can't control that. Mm. Um, so that's my personal thing that is gonna go back in phase two. Um about this, the economy right now. A lot of jobs have opened back up, a lot of companies have opened up, a lot of companies have are hurting because they had to close because a lot of their employees got sick or they did open up and people they got sick so they had to close down um we have a change shortage in some places shortage There's a lot of different yeah what shortage shortage of change money oh shortage of cash yes why that's an economy question that I would love to ask. <laughs> when you but say shortage of cash, of you're talking about people having no money or you're saying cash exchanging, exchanging hands. Yes, like coins, coins, C-O-I-N-S, coins, like money, coins. Yeah, some stores don't have coins. You're saying that it kind of like coins. disappeared. Yes. Oh, why? How now, that's you, a question that what, I have to What makes down. you feel that it's disappeared? Because people can't find coins and they're not changing it. They're not, why? What do you mean by they disappeared? Or they became less? What, what's that? I don't understand. Maybe if you, can, if you can go into a store and they'll say, hey, make sure you have adequate change because we're shortage on coins. And you can go around different stores and it's like that. The bank, you can't give you coins and... It's so much stuff that's going on, but I can't talk yeah. about it because I don't have the accurate amount of information to go yeah. off and say. Okay. Um, could it be that the banks are keeping it because coins are a source of contact from, you know, between uh, human to human? Do you think the banks are keeping it? That's a, that's a big possibility. Yeah, but you know but, what I'm trying to say, right? Because it's passing through yeah. hands to hands. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But they can do that with cash too, with dollar bills. Yeah, so the bills are not in shortage, but the coins are. It's the coins, yeah. And it only happened when? 
we started to realize. Um, about a couple months ago. Oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you know, because when I read the news, um, some workers, uh, I don't know if that, that addresses your situation, but it's what I read. Um, they are not supposed to accept um, cash or coins, cash as in bills and or coins, because they're going to touch the staff, the, 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 the workers or the staff are going to touch the bills and the coins. So some shops uh, instruct, have instructed the workers not to accept cash, but you know, just take non-contact um, tap or non-contact with your credit card or your debit card um, to pay for, for, for your stuff. Um, right. But I'm not sure if that, um, that kind of situation um, is kind of like happening in, in Louisiana where you are. Um, and in certain countries, um, uh, I think the big banks are, uh, I mean, I read the news that China was washing its, uh, its, its currencies, the bills yeah. and the coins, they were really, really washing it because, they, 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 because that is the thing that was just like being transferred from hands to hands. So I, right. I, don't, I don't know what, what's going on there. So, but at your place, the jobs are being lost. Um, was there, do you know um, of people, uh, you know, besides your husband at that point that he lost his job, but now he's got something that picked up on the internet. Um, do you know uh, of people who just lost their job and never found it? Yes, there's a lot of people that have lost their jobs, but they are dependent on unemployment. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. They have unemployment to uh, help them, but you got to think about unemployment only goes so far and can scratch so much, but you got to think about the fact that a person may have brought home a, a significant amount of money and the unemployment is a third or even, you know, half of that. Yeah, okay. And they have mortgages that's way more than what yeah. unemployment can give. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. So, um, is there any final concluding information that you want to share with us um, from Louisiana? Yes. We want everybody to make sure they take this serious, wash your hands, wear your mask, social distance. It's not, it's, you're not rude by not hugging or shaking someone's hand. You know, I always say that you don't have to shake my hand to be my friend. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, you did say that the third factor that kept you together was your faith. Um, yes. And you prayed a lot and that you fasted a lot. Well, I hope that we, we could um, explore that because um, I'm going to have a series on faith in pandemic. Okay. Um, yeah, we talked about pandemic now. Uh, I'm going to invite different people to talk about uh, how they rediscover their faith, whichever faith that, that you are in. Uh, you know, they talked about how faith, uh, how they rediscover faith or how their faith kind of like brought them through this very, very difficult process. Um, right. It definitely helped me. Uh, I'm a Christian. Um, I rediscovered my faith. Uh, I should say I rediscovered my, um, I should say, um, I can't say I rediscovered faith, but, you know, I, I rediscovered uh, my belief. Yeah, belief, my yeah. Belief. And, um, and, 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 I've, and I did explore that in some of my series uh, before, but I'm going to like have a new series coming up about faith um, and I'm going to invite different people and definitely I hope that you can be on again uh, to sure. tell us, to share with us your faith, how you, how it actually um, bring you, uh, 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 sustain you through um, right. this journey and how um, it will play a very much more important part to complete this pandemic journey. Yeah. <laughs> All of us are in this together. Um, Alicia, thank you yes. so much. Um, thank you, you have been, You have been so wonderful and I totally, totally enjoy just having this women's talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you well, know? How's I was nervous. <laughs> no, no, but you did well. Well done. And you know, um, I, 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 I want to really 
um, give thanks to women like you who, who keep the family safe and the family together um, despite their own fears, anxieties, and you were trying to reach out to get help for yourself because you knew that uh, you needed to take care of the family, your kids. Right. 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 Um, that higher calling for women, um, I think history will really prove that women are pivotal um, in sustaining uh, the family, the community, and keeping the numbers down. Um, you know, so on, on a sociological level. So thank you so much, Alicia. Um, I will um, text you again, and okay. um, and I will invite you for my next series for uh, faith in pandemic. I I'm. I've spoken two episodes on my own about my faith in pandemic that I pray every day, etc. And I pray for uh, my country and I pray for the world now, um, uh, you know, to, to, for mercy, right? For mercy, for protection, etc., etc. And I want to hear from you, uh, how do you do it? Um, then I, I will, uh, and just a little bit to the listeners who are tuning in right now, um, I, I will invite... Uh, Pastor uh, Stephen uh, Mannion from uh, New York State to be on the show uh, wow. next week. Yeah, so um, he's going to talk about. He's going to be on the second uh, sec second time here to talk to talk about faith in uh, pandemic. So um, he's going to talk about soul rediscovery during this period of time. And the last time that uh, and and people and listeners and viewers can can watch. Uh, below um, some of the interviews I have and the one with ha I have with him is that um, he, 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 he tries to answer certain questions like um, you know because I asked him right so he tries to answer the question yeah. is this a punishment from God is this a judgment from God Ooh. are we seeing the end times are we seeing the end of days now end times and end of days are a little bit different in the Bible, I'm a Christian, uh, and, but I'm not into the theology, you know. But but I wanted to to find out. So so he, he attempted to answer these questions, which are very deep, right? Yeah. Um, uh, like in about forty minutes. So I'm going to uh, invite him again uh, uh, in at the end of November next week, and I'm going to put it up uh, uh, on the podcast and also on YouTube. Uh, um, about soul uh, discovery in pandemic, and I would like to invite you to talk about your faith um, and how it sustains you and your family as a practitioner, like myself. You know, um, we're not we're not the great faith leaders, right? We're just like people who are just living a life. You know, but how right. do sustain us, help us, and keep our mind okay in check so that we can take care of the homes. Uh, and to right. get other people and not be a burden for others you know so um, that's a little bit of promotion for my upcoming episodes thank you once again Alicia so I'm promoting your episode too oh, thank you <laughs> wonderful so lady of the house uh, a big round of applause for you oh thank well you done. thank you guys Thank you for your tips, and I'll and I and I'll see you again. Okay. Send my send my warmest regards from Singapore to your husband, um, and his name is Michael. Shout out to Michael. <laughs> your lady is doing a great job, and like stop saying that she's like overboard because she is <laughs> trying to protect you, and that procedure she has in place is a manifestation of love. That's, that's, I'm gonna use that one it because she, she's gonna get her hands dirty, right? Yeah, you know she doesn't have to do it. Um, so I just want to tell all husbands, your wives are protecting you. That's it. <laughs> Take care, my dear friend. Bye. All, all right. the best. Bye Thank bye. you. I'm gonna see you again. Right. Okay. Thank all you. All right. Bye bye. bye.